My name is Seema Persnani. I'm uh, one of the co-chairs for the Technology Committee. Alongside with me is uh, Raj Kanwala, who's a cardiologist at Cedars-Sinai, and Rigved Tadwalkar, who's a uh, fellow at UCLA Harbor. Um, this has really been a, a teamwork effort uh, with the support of the California ACC leadership. And uh, I just want to welcome you all. This is our second annual technology symposium. I hope that you uh, enjoy today uh, as much as uh, we all do. Uh, we have an excellent group of speakers covering a very diverse range of topics from wearable devices to genomics to artificial intelligence. And I'm just so excited to hear all of our talks that we have today. Uh, this is certainly the culmination of a lot of hard work over the last year. However, I really think that this is the beginning of a new movement, a new communication and dialogue between the technology and the cardiology communities. I wanted to uh, start off uh, by uh, simply talking to you about how I use technology in my day-to-day -day life, um, and then I'll come around to discussing why we're here today and hopefully provide a little bit of excitement and inspiration for the, uh, the rest of the day. So. Like you all, um, my typical morning does involve the use of technology. It may interrupt my zen in the morning, but we all have certain apps that we use uh, and turn to in the morning. For me, um, that involves uh, looking at my epic in the morning, seeing what my schedule is um, day to day, seeing if I have new consults um, in the inpatient setting, um, and looking at what I have in store for me at work for the day. I may go for a run in the morning or go to the gym and measure my activity, track my um, steps, track my um, mileage uh, using Map My Run. On my way to work, uh, on my commute, uh, I typically use Waze um, to avoid the traffic, avoid the cops as much as I can. Uh, often I'm listening to podcasts or Audible on my uh, way to work. So those are some of the apps that uh, I tend to use in the morning, and I'm sure you all can relate uh, to the ones that you use and the way that you, you use technology personally. I arrive at work. Uh, I work at Kaiser Permanente uh, out in the East Bay. It's a brand new building. Um, you can see it's a very modern looking building there uh, on the left side of the screen. Uh, we actually have a uh, robot that's roaming around due to some security issues in the parking lot 24-7. Uh, it's a 5 foot 300 pound uh, robot uh, that's constantly observing and that was produced by a company called Nightscope. Uh, we also have electric charging stations uh, for my future Tesla. Uh, we have touch screens uh, on the bottom there uh, for patients to find uh, where they're going, uh, where their patients, uh, where our patients are, where their family members are, where their appointments are. So you can see it's a fairly tech savvy uh, place on the outside. Then you enter my office. <laughs> uh, so fairly antiquated, the tools that I use day to day as a clinical cardiologist. Uh, pretty basic, stethoscope, pager, those have been around for a long time. You can see uh, my uh, phone there, um, a landline phone, S unfortunately a stack of charts uh, right uh, juxtaposed with uh, the Epic uh, on, uh, uh, on the computer. So. What I'm getting at is there's obviously a disconnect. Uh, the use of technology in our personal lives has really far surpassed that uh, in our professional lives as clinicians. And I'm sure many of you clinicians in the room can relate to that feeling. Outside of work, we use technology in a variety of ways. We use it, uh, things like FaceTime uh, and Facebook and Twitter to connect us and inform us, keep us connected to loves, loved ones and keep us connected to information. We use tracking devices to understand and alter our behavior from simply activity and steps uh, to things like tracking our mood or our meditation uh, effects. Um, and the goal of doing these things is really so that we can be more content day to day uh, and ultimately so that we can be more productive members of society. So the logical question is, shouldn't we optimize the use of technology to offer our patients the best care. And best care has a lot of different meanings that may be high quality, individualized versus simply population-based, efficient, accessible, low cost. Um, with that, I wanted to um, wake you up a little bit with some images um, and uh, hopefully excite you for what's out there and what I find exciting in the field of uh, cardiology related to technology. Uh, so here, I think we're all familiar with uh, this device. Uh, this is um, produced by uh, several different companies, but basically this is a handheld ultrasound. So as a cardiologist, can one imagine 
walking and doing uh, doing your rounds in the morning, taking this out of your pocket and being able to measure a patient's heart function or look at their valve's bedside, that would really be quite transformative. This particular device actually connects uh, to your mobile phone using your mobile phone as a screen. Um, so talk about uh, portability and getting data uh, quickly at the bedside. What do you think is going on here? So this is quite fascinating. Um, there's a woman holding up a pill to her phone. And uh, what this is is a um, artificial intelligence, an AI platform that's actually um, has um, patented sensor technology to identify is that the correct pill that this woman is taking? Um, has she actually taken it? So she'll subsequently actually um, interact with the device watching it uh, enter her mouth. So what it does is it checks that she's taken the medicine, um, you know, in a sort of directly observed therapy uh, a la uh, tuberculosis days. So it's very fascinating and this is something that really um, is, uh, is uh, quite innovative for documenting medication adherence. What's this device? Um, so patients can actually implant this sensor underneath the skin. It's called a Dexcom. It's a, um, a continuous glucose monitor. And a patient actually can buy this device. It is um, uh, approved also by Medicare now. And actually implant this device under the skin. What you're see seeing is a larger uh, transmitter that's connected to that uh, subcutaneous sensor. And that provides continuous glucose monitoring. And it can actually um, also communicate with an insulin pump. So we all, as clinicians, have diabetic patients, and imagine having that information at our fingertips, what is their constant glucose, without pricking their finger constantly throughout the day. What's going on here? So this man, uh, he's been um, resuscitated, obviously an actor here, um, by um, uh, a, a AED, a defibrillator, that's been delivered by drone. Um, so this is really quite fascinating. I'm sure uh, many of you are familiar with some of the data that came out of Toronto earlier this year and uh, out in Europe they're they're really um, uh, pushing this technology. So obviously this has implications for providing defibrillator um, support in areas where it takes too long to get an ambulance there. Um, so this is really quite fascinating. How about this? What is this? Um, interesting uh, looking attire. So this is actually a vest that has uh, 252 unipolar electrodes uh, that then um, allows us to map uh, where arrhythmias are coming from. So typically uh, patients with arrhythmias requiring uh, ablation procedures will go into the electrophysiology lab for many, many, many hours and uh, electrophysiologists will determine uh, where their signals are coming from um, using uh, specialized uh, catheters. This is actually a vest that a patient would put on, get under a CT scanner, and using the anatomical data from the CT scanner, as well as the potential data from uh, the vest, will provide um, a, a location of where the arrhythmia signals are coming from. Uh, this is still in research development, but obviously very exciting technology. And finally, we're going to hear a lot more about the Alive Core uh, later on today. Um, but um, did you know you can also use it for arrhythmia detection in your pets? So I'm showing these things just to get you excited for what we have in store for you today. Um, but this is really the goal of the event. Um, we want to bring together practitioners and technology leaders to develop and implement new solutions in the field of cardiology and cardiovascular medicine. Hopefully, especially through the panel discussion, we'll be able to generate thought-provoking discussion among leading experts in the field. Uh, and finally, I hope that all of this information gathered today helps empower providers really to be at the forefront of innovation that impacts patient care. I want to thank you, as Norm did, uh, to everyone that's here today for spending your Saturday with us. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, all of the exhibitors, the sponsors, in particular uh, Novartis, Spry Health, the Live Corps, uh, the California ACC leadership, um, particularly Norm uh, Garwood G and uh, Liana Collins, the CEO of, um, uh, of uh, uh, the California ACC. And um, I want to thank all of our speakers that have come here today who are all experts and innovators in their own, in their own right. 
I finally, on a flight last week, I had um, the opportunity to read um, Adam Grant's Originals, which is such a wonderful book, and I encourage you all to read. But I want to leave you with uh, this quote uh, from that book. Ultimately, the people who choose to champion originality are the ones who propel us forward. Their inner experiences are not any different from our own. They feel the same fear, the same doubt as the rest of us. What sets them apart is that they take action anyway. They know in their hearts that failing would yield less regret than failing to try. On that note, I hope you enjoy the day today. I'd like to turn over the program uh, to um, my co-chair, uh, Raj Kondwala.